Anyway, so before, um, without, without much ado, all of you are here to talk um, here, here about React on Rails, and it's pretty, uh, I think it's a pretty interesting story, and it's becoming very, very topical. Okay, so kind of told you a little about me here. I did go to Pali High, so I do have some legitimate experience here in LA, and I actually do have um, quite a bit of family. They all still love LA. They love the motion picture industry, entertainment, the restaurants and everything, and I will admit it, I love telling people to know it. And if maybe you want to learn about that stuff, definitely get in touch with me. Okay, so why add React to a Rails project? How many of you have been through a project with some jQuery, some CoffeeScript, and you decide, hey, it's about time we put in some React, right? <laughs> Probably all of you here, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is what happened. Um, 2014, one of my um, consulting clients, we wanted to build a interactive dashboard. They are actually still a client of mine, a drone. The guy's funny because I kind of developed the concepts for React and Rails working on this stuff, and he wanted me to listen on my open source page. So, okay. <laughs> so um, when this project came about, I was like, okay, um, done tons and tons of stuff with CoffeeScript and all that um, Rails UJS stuff, et cetera. And it was like, okay, there's got to be a better way to do this. And uh, you know, Ember had come out, so I, I heard about Ember. I was looking, you know, looking into that quite a bit. The other thing I wanted to um, to look at is Angular was getting pretty popular. To look at that. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine, this is actually the true story. This guy, Bo Hartshorn, he actually is a Facebook alumni slash retiree because he started there pretty young, early in the days of Facebook. He's staying at one of my guest apartments and got to be good friends with him. And he said, hey, you should check out, check out React. Check out, it's kind of pretty cool. Didn't really think much of it. And um, then um, watched two videos on React. Um, I'm not sure. How many of you have seen these videos from Pete Hunt? If, you, if you've seen these videos from Pete Hunt, it's like, I don't even want to try to explain to you um, why you would pick React or Angular or the other stuff. It's just, it's just so obvious. <laughs> All of you agree? All of you are already on React? Okay. So it's just like, um, by the way, if, if you're not, we had a, I, I was just on the Ruby Rogues, came out just like a week ago or a couple weeks ago, and um, one of the guys that's interviewing me is Jason Sweat, and he um, does Angular on Rails, like literally, like that's his business, but his business is Angular on Rails, it's just kind of coaching on that. We've got something much better than that, because we get the full on gem nowadays with React on Rails. <laughs> And, and in the talk, there's a lot of talk about, oh, I react and all this stuff, and single flow of data and all that stuff. I'm not going to bore you with all that, because you're all you're already here. Um, I'm not going to bore you with these details here, but why react inside of a Rails app. One of the big things about what we do, especially with React on Rails, is that it is not an all or nothing thing going with React versus your Rails app. In fact, it's, it's, I think it's just the ultimate combination. You have some pages in your app, and you want it to be interactive, you want this, all this good stuff, or, and you know this is the places where it matters, and you put more engineering time into it. And then you got stuff like your back end. Every app, every, I think, enterprise app, commercial app, et cetera, you've got to have, like, well, what does your staff use to check on the data, help people out, et cetera? You know, some of that stuff, who cares if it's, you know, not, not in, you know, made a React part. It's even better than just saying you can mix and match it in the app. One of the things we developed in React and Rails, you see, is that you can have a header. This is one of my favorite features. Your header can be React, the body of your app can be either React or regular Rails, and they can communicate through a Redux store, and it's just, it just works straight out of the box with React on Rails. So that means you have your header, it can be like dynamic, talking to the server, blah, 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 displaying notifications. And boom, you get this one link in your header, you're playing Rails up down below. <laughs> All right. So, how many of you have heard of the React Rails gem? Okay, pretty much everybody here. When I first wanted to try out um, React, um, I got on the React Rails gem actually earlier in my career before I formed Chocolate Code. Is I created a blog called Rails on Maui and started making some screencasts. It's actually all, all the work that you do to sharing your knowledge with the world, it really literally comes back to you. I mean, I'm not going to say it's like I just do it because it's a nice thing to do, but it literally does come back to you. And that's how I found my whole team, is just putting stuff out there in the world. 
So anyway, one of the things I did was I did make a video tutorial for, um, for React Rails for React Rails and going through. So you watch it, Scott. Yeah. Scott's actually been to my place in Mao. Scott, how was it? Fantastic. I found you through Mao. <laughs> we have a picture of Scott with a root deck on there. Pretty cool. Scott. Ocean in the background. No, no. Anyway, so we did that. So we had, so we had this. Um, you know, so we do this stuff, and the problem was that, um, and I didn't even know it was that big of a problem, because at the time, okay, so this is back, you know, 2014, <laughs> how common was it to use NPM for JavaScript inside a Rails project? Not that common at all, I don't think. How common was it to find some of your JavaScript inside of a Ruby gem, like, you know, jQuery Rails, right? A lot of people use that stuff, right? Now, then you realize, okay, there's some other open source stuff you want, and what do you use, like Bower, or I don't know, all that other stuff, right? It was not convenient at all. So what do people mostly do? Copy the JavaScript in your Rails project. Oh, not, not good. So the problem with the React Rails gem, the whole thing about this is that you end up, yeah, you end up using the asset pipeline. It's all based on the asset pipeline. So what it came down to was that it just, it was a nightmare going, okay, the, literally, I do remember exactly the thing I ran into. I wanted to use the React Bootstrap gem, no, not a gem, NPM package. So you go out there and you go, well, I want to find some open source. Yes, so great. So how do I do that? Hmm, well, there's no gem that puts it in there. I don't know what to do now, literally. Didn't know what to do. And then I started reading around, and one of um, the controls from Bose, this guy, Pete Hunt, Bo introduced me to Pete Hunt, so I'm talking to Pete Hunt. He goes, yeah, try out Webpack. Google around, found someone who had written one article on how to put Webpack together with Rails. So then um, I basically, I did a lot of work, and I figured it out and wrote this article. And this actually got a lot of traction. How many of you ever saw this article or helped, <laughs> helped you kind of get um, React um, in this? So, um, John, I know you guys are using Webpack. I guarantee your developers saw this article. Uh, well, we, I'm sure they did. We, uh, we use exactly that description. <laughs> <laughs> so this was, this was cool. So this helped me out with the client project. I, and not only did I make the article, but I made an open source example that clearly showed how to do all this stuff. It's, uh, if you go to reactrails.com, it actually is a live running version of Roku. The example is from React. Re, um, it's a React Webpack Rails tutorial, and that's the GitHub thing. It's, it's, it was doing pretty well, so, you know, getting a whole lot of stars, a lot of traffic, and that was cool. So I had this great technique, great article, but that was it, just a technique and an article. So I'm talking to other people in the community, they're doing React and Rails stuff, and then, um, you know, they said the, um, the issue was, was that how do you do server rendering with the thing I did? So what I did was I figured out how to get Webpack into the Rails app, how to set up the scripts, how to set up the deployment on Roku, but it was an enterprise type app where you had to log in, we were not worried about server rendering and SEO, and now there's even other reasons why you might do the server rendering stuff, but mainly like the SEO angle. So what we did was is I had some just template code that would just, you know, sense that you had this component on the page, you know, by the way the page did it, run some code and basically bootstrap loading this component. Okay, so not doing the server rendering stuff. So then, um, you know, how are we going to do, you know, so I was like, okay, none of, a bunch of people I know, they're not going to use the technique I did because they had no server rendering. I go, there's no way I'm going to use the asset pipeline thing of uh, so I took a look at the source code, and just like the story that React Router came from uh, the router in Ember, I looked at how React Rails did server render. You know, it's like, okay, you know, read the code. It's, it's unbelievable the amount of knowledge you can get by reading open source code. Like, I, don't know, I think it's one of the differences between newbies and you know, advanced developers. Advanced developers read the code. You, you just never know about the docs. Anyway, and so you just want to do something on your own. So, um, Read the, so I read the code and figured it, and then I, you know, okay, so I was like, okay. It's actually, the true story was, was that the very first, one of the very, one of the early engineers I hired, I said, hey, let's pair together and figure this thing out. This guy saw me on the channel, I had my back in engineering, and he did that, and he did that, and it's like, it's literally the very beginnings of a job. 
Um, you, were, you guys already know this, I skipped through a couple slides. Why do you use NPM? Does everybody here know why you use NPM.js? Basically, the NPM.js is Ruby gems for JavaScript, except it's probably like 30 times, probably 100 times as big now, I bet. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures I put in this article about, um, back to this article about why I thought that the old way really sucked, which was, you know, get off the, um, Get off the um, get off the um, coffee script here. I, I used to love doing the coffee script, and then once ES six came along, I was like, okay, well, I'm sold. So the other thing is, is once you do finally get on all full on npm, you realize that there, if you if you do not do a really good Google search for anything you want to do, you are being very very foolish. I think all of us know that because it just not there's no worse feeling. Then you spent like three days doing something, and another developer comes over here and goes, hey, Google this. And you realize, oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I kind of mentioned here. So, so server rendering was the first real reason why I came up with the React Rails gem. The, um, the other thing about the um, React Rails gem is that in the community for React on Rails is I wanted to make it so that it's um, omakase for doing JavaScript apps. Because as some of you heard, that everyone talks about JavaScript fatigue. Okay. Well, you know, if you kind of work with my company, Shot Code, it's like, we do the research for you so you don't have to spend days and days or you know, months doing it. So you literally, you get on board with this stuff, and well, we, you know, it's just pretty easy. Have, have any of you ever here been using React on Rails? Just curious. Kind of living up to that. <laughs> There's, I wrote an article about because David wrote um, the article, the um, Rails Doctrine, and I wrote an article, the React on Rails Doctrine, kind of shows how it fits in there. Um, so part of the Omakase thing is I wanted to integrate what we think are the best practices, which is React Router and Redux. I think um, we made those choices early on, and just like the choice of Webpack early on. Um, pretty much turn out to be 100% right in terms of community momentum. And I was pretty stoked on that. Uh, one of the other things I think we did was pretty cool. I chose to do early on was took the JavaScript part of uh, React on Rails, and I made an NPM package. And that actually, so we use all of our you know ES6 type stuff for um, React on the actual JavaScript code in React on Rails. Interesting fact: the actual React on Rails NPM part is used by um, projects for Python and PHP in terms of how it gets bootstrapped. Um, as of I think it was today, we're 2167 stars. That's kind of my little like I told my friends like you know, don't worry about tech. It's like 20,000 Instagram followers, you know. <laughs> Actually, you know, like, yeah. So let's see what else here. Um, good stuff. Oh, okay, so. So there's some. So here's like kind of the, the basic gist of how it works um, for React on Rails is that everything is underneath one directory called client that's all your JavaScript. So like if you had all your JavaScript say in a separate GitHub repo, it would just literally go right back underneath the client directory, and then well you're using one repo and not two. <laughs> um, so let's see what else here. Um, the other thing too that's not actually um, I don't talk about like so why do you use like why do you want to do your JavaScript the JavaScript way? It's not like React, it's not like the library, but it's all the tooling even besides Webpack, it's especially ESLint, Flow, and the CSS modules which you get through um, using Webpack. And how many of you have used CSS modules? So it, it is unbelievable how nice it is to use CSS modules once you start using it because it's just you realize. Oh my gosh, I need to move something over five pixels, and now I gotta figure out what is the right CSS selectivity. Get this one little thing to move over five pixels versus just saying, here's a class, move over five pixels, done. And you don't end up with um, some Frankenstein mess of CSS. I know we've all seen that. <laughs> okay, so a um, couple other things React on Rails. So I, like, what is it actually? What does it do? Just put a graphic in there for this. Um, I mean, what what re, what it does is we use Webpack and we create essentially a JavaScript file, and that goes right into the asset pipeline, and that's it. It says, you know, we don't change the asset pipeline to 
compile VS6, et cetera. We just go right into there. And we just make a, we use Webpack and another tool, and we make a, you know, a, we might make a few files, actually, if we're doing more advanced app. The, um, we have a really nice basic tutorial here. Um, what I want to do is, um, I actually was demoing, kind of getting ready for this, um, you know, doing the demo of this thing, installing and stuff like that, or even I did a recording of it without talking. I actually just did a video on doing this. It's, it'll take less than like three and a half minutes, you might have to play it. And you'll see exactly what it does. Let's see if this goes all the right. Why is it with the time plane? Wait for me to show you what React on Rails is all about. Is there a way I can turn the volume up? No, it kind of it started shaking when I switched from Keynote. Yeah. And now Keynote is shaking. I know it's so hard to. It's yeah, it's hard. probably the AC. You think it's the AC kicked on? Yeah. I think I did hear the AC just kick on too. And it's um. What do you all want to do? Just play it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, uh, okay. Um, I guess is that as loud as we'll go to? Does it go off the um, Does it go off the audio? I think it might have been loud enough. Yeah. Yeah. We can loud enough. Okay. Let's get the show our tutorial. So I'm going to walk through these tutorial steps. You can find them here at GitHub, and we're going to take a look at through what happens when we run the tutorial. It's a really great way to understand everything that's going on. Here. So the very first steps in the tutorial are going to be making sure your node environment is set up correctly. Then we'll make sure our Ruby environment is set up correctly. Then we're going to install Rails. We'll make sure we got the right Rails version. We're going to create a new Rails app. We'll see me into the Rails app directory. We're going to create a GitHub repository. We're going to commit everything because we want to make sure that when we run the generator, we can see um, exactly the changes. We're adding gem react on Rails to our gem file. How can we do this? We're going to need to run bundle. We're going to get commit this. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to run the generator. Here's the help for the generator. The main option to go up pay attention is the redex option. So great, we ran the generator. Boom. Bundle, you gotta run bundle, and you gotta run NPMI afterwards. This is gonna install all the libraries that React on Rails needs. It's quite a few. Here are the files that we created. Great, we started up the app. Here we go. This is Hello World, it creates us. Wow, it was that easy. This app is created. So you notice here it's a real JavaScript app. It's you type something and this page is reflecting it. Um, immediately in two places. You can go take a look at the, um, the elements there. When you look at the elements, what you're going to see is the, um, the actual HTML that's generated by the JavaScript. This HTML is not in your app. It's, it's not in your, say it's not in your Rails app. It's, it's not coming to the page in terms of the page source. This is all dynamically generated HTML from the JavaScript library React. So what is what are we actually setting the browser? Let's take a look at the source code for doing this. So if we take a look at the source code, scroll down, we got some data on the page that's used for generating a component, and we have the component that is there, and it's just one little um, line right there that shows you that's just what you're going to say. So if we take a look here, we'll take a look at the layout here. That's using the view. And we can actually turn this over on the true. 
So we'll go turn this to true, and let's just see what happens in the um, source we generate. So this is we're turning on pre-render server, which is server rendering. So if we view the page source now, we actually generated the HTML. So you may be wondering, you know, what is a server rendering business? Why do you want to generate that HTML on the server side? There's some reasons you might want to do this for SEO, and maybe for performance, but it depends. You're taking performance to the client side app, and you're putting it on the server side. So there you go. Over on the right hand side, you can see what's what's there is the um, part that is, you know, really simple. The it's just one line. The you know React component. That's what we send to the browser. What you see on the left hand side is a server render. Hi, this is Justin. Thank you for watching my video. Sorry. I gave you an overview of my. <laughs> percent self-funded and I'm hustling. <laughs> <laughs> so not gonna be shy about that. Um, I've seen too many um I spent my whole life working for venture back companies and um, I don't know. Someone might not let me work for Maui, so I want to be self-funded. <laughs> um, so what so that's kind of the um Thanks for, thanks for putting up with that. Um, you know, the, the big thing about nowadays, actually, this is like JavaScript. This is just like the last few weeks. Everybody's moving to Yarn. And Yarn saves a lot of time on the NPM install. It's really painful demoing this if I wait for the NPM install. It's like if you ever demo something, you're waiting for like your Ruby gems to download. It's like, oh, yeah, this is like time slows down. And so that's why it's. That's why actually it's a good. I've actually presented on RailsConf. This is like a critical tip. If you ever do give a presentation, Never code in front of an audience. <laughs> Always screencast, record it, and then you can stop and start it. So, what I want to show you is so, what I've got here is the code that was generated right here. And it's actually, this is live here. Um, Time do you want me to spend? Um, you guys having fun? Is this interesting? Yeah. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, by the way, so, um, yeah, so, hello, L A Ruby. Woo! Do you guys ever, like, you guys know who Jack Ma is? The guy, Alibaba? Oh, yeah. Jack Ma? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, this is Justin. <laughs> 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 I'll be like my um, So, so we've got this going. So this is this is it here. So, um, so I mean, really, the, the real advantage of me coming out here. So obviously, as you can ask questions about um, you know, what we've got. Um, what I wanted to show you here is that um, I've, I've got this app's actually running. Uh, so what I did was right here. Here's you know the, all the stuff that ran and. The, um, Terminal, blah blah blah, and I did all that stuff. It's yeah, it's, a, it's a bunch of stuff, and it was it was really a work of a lot of people to get that to work. I mean, you know, you think about it, you just run this one command, and like boom, you got a webpack running in your um, Rails app, and you're you're set up and you're up and going. So here I got making sure that these um, uh, some money are um, running right now. Um, okay, so. See, um, we start this stuff off with a foreman task. Um, the reason why we started up with a foreman task is because there's a couple different processes that we typically run. You'll have a Rails process running the server, and we'll have a web, one or more Webpack processes that are going to be generating the JavaScript files. So now this app is up and running right here, and um, you know, so this app actually, even though it wasn't running, was sort of it was running because the client side stuff was running. There's no server side really part of this other than, um, you know, obviously, if I 
refresh this page here. It says hello stranger. That's the thing I think that gets installed and it's all the app. <coughs> and um, yeah. So hello three. Um how do I do that? Um anyway, um one thing I was gonna show you is like uh well this is like socket connection with the browser, it's kind of wired up through React. And the way we the way it works is we run um, a separate Webpack dev server to actually create the code that actually that creates your JavaScript file and gets loaded in the browser. It's it's all follow the recipe and it just works. You don't have to understand right? So essentially uh, based on your uh, right now it just kind of renders the application entirely, right? It just doesn't reload the browser, it just kind of re renders the entire app. It's something you use during development. It just re re renders a page that's visible. Oh, yeah. Can you speak to, like, because I just started getting into this recently in the last month or so. And so, um, you know, how does, how does the virtual DOM get play, you know, uh, uh, work with this, oper with this RESTful operation? Because yeah. that's the confusing part for me, because the okay, virtual so DOM is, is RESTful. taking. Yeah. 
You mean like you're going to be doing asynchronous type stuff? You're making yeah. API calls. Okay. You're talking about REST server? Yeah. Like an API server. Okay. Okay, so first of all, the question sort of isn't correctly phrased. Mm. Okay. So the virtual DOM is a implementation detail of React. Yeah. And the whole point of the virtual DOM is that regular old DOM development with jQuery is like you find stuff in the DOM and you manipulate it, you move it around. And every time you do that, it's a slow operation in the browser. So if you end up doing it a lot, things slow down. So what happens in React is this whole idea of unidirectional data flow. You set up some data, you've got some components that will be composed of other components, they'll get the data, they render to the virtual DOM, and then when React is ready, it goes poof, and it, it is, then it renders. And then so it's the virtual DOM has absolutely nothing to do with RESTful API stuff, API, or and that nothing to do with API stuff. That's a whole like when you start getting involved with Redux, that's where you start getting involved with asynchronous operations and how to handle it and stuff like Redux Saga versus Thunk, etc. So all you need to know about React is that you have some data, it's like um, you know, like a basically like a JSON file, and then here's a bunch of code that says turns that into HTML. Okay. We have some art arts actually saving saving the changes back to the server. Redux is just the maintenance state. Redux is just the yeah, exactly. It's just maintenance of the state. It inter it interacts with all your API calls, for example. Like a very common thing which you'll do when you have a, a remote call is that you'll make a remote call and you'll set an, a fetching flag. We call it like using is fetching. And we'll set some part of our store says is fetching. And when something's fetching, you display a busy cursor on the screen. And that will be, I will be changing the state of the store when the is fetching happens. And when that remote call comes back, I'm not really worried, I have some code that's gonna handle getting that remote call and the store is gonna get updated. And when the store gets updated, what happens is, is that the React components will be notified of the new set of data to render. It's the diff method that's basically changing, that's like making sure that the thing that's been rendered in the DOM is exactly the same and then will get updated in the component. Yeah, it's just it's interesting like, to see yeah. like where, you know, where that component is going to get re-rendered and how that asset pipeline is going to be touched in the... It's like a, it's not a it, Keith, Justin will disagree with you. It's not like it's a way you can psychologically map with it. It's almost to think of React as the V, and we're not dealing with the M and the C at all. That's something else. Yeah, that's just totally correct. Right. Yeah. So if you want to think of it as if you're thinking that way, none of those issues matter at all to right. React development. Period. You could. In theory, you don't have to use Redux. In theory, you can use some of your jQuery yeah. construct. It does all your REST operations, make your JSON, and you just pass it to a React component that renders it in the view. Right. It uh, makes no difference. There are best practices. Right, that's uh, maybe what I'm asking. Best yeah, practices. Like, so, you know, so yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, I really think that the, the work that, that I've done with the community in terms of the discussions, you can literally see discussions in some of the pull requests that we get into about figuring out the best practices for how to do hmm. all this. And if you can, like in the stuff that even goes on internally in my company, there's stuff that's way beyond tutorial level in terms of real production app. And this is the stuff we apply to all of our clients. And plus we get in, you know, we work with our clients and we're just constantly improving. The stuff literally changes every day. Hmm. You got a question in the back? Yeah, yeah. Justin. Um, okay. So, the state itself contains the data and it changes all the time. But then when it talks to the Rails controller and the server and the database and the Rails yeah. application, how does that data in the state in Redux or just in React itself get transferred over to um, your database on the server side? Yeah, so which what a, a lot of so what you're asking is going to be quite a bit beyond the scope of, um, so let me give you, um, show you this. So if you go to reactrails.com, this is the, um, it's really, you just need to go here and there's a bunch of links on here. You can go to, 
So you go to you go to ReactRails.com, and on here, this is real stuff. And any of you could like go to this page right now and type something in, and this gets refreshed every 60 seconds on my screen. And it's like a little kind of new microblog. It's kind of a silly example. It just shows doing an in for, in, input form in the three different ways for Trigger Bootstrap. But it's a good example of like, hey, this is like you know real JavaScript that's going on. It also shows off, you know, this is React Router. See this comments indicator here? What we've got here is we've got a React header and we've got a Rails a Rails or React body. And for example, this classic Rails thing, this was generated with the scaffolding. And notice here the little number there went away because when this came up there was no, um, there was no, it's because of the way the code's written there, it couldn't actually be connected to it. But this is an actual JSX at the top. So, uh, so as I load up these different pages here, this is this is a real um, React on Rails app here using using React Router. So, so like the React Router demo here, you can test like go uh, to this React Router page, is React Router's working, blah blah blah. So the questions you're asking me about, like you know, doing this asynchronous stuff, what you did is you go to the open source example for this. And I could literally, I could, I actually have this running and I was thinking before I was going to come over here and do this talk, I was like, oh god, this is like, this is like way, way too complicated, like, you know, to go into, like, you know, just, like, talk. This is, to, um, I'm actually doing, starting next week, I'm going to do an egghead. They, um, those guys approached me, same guys that did read up, the guy Dan, they, those guys reached out to me. I want to reach out to you for two reasons. One is, you might want to hire the guys. We're, we're doing like this on web pack stuff and whatever, so maybe give them some coaching stuff. That's one, one thing that we do is we do this coaching thing where we set the, um, teams up with a private Slack room and all my engineers have access. And literally 24 by 7, you, know, you ask a question in there, you'll get a, you'll get a real quick answer. So we do that for a $1,500 um, fee, and it's like lasts like at least six months of, um, of help. You know, limited the numbers of hours and stuff, you know, we can spend with you. But for most of the teams that have done that, it just kind of lasts forever, and they've they've gotten a lot out of it. And some of those some of those people that sign us up for coaching eventually have us do some of the coding as well. So the, one of the things we do when we do the coaching a lot, the reason why the time goes so far is when someone asks us a question, we just point them to the exact perfect line in the examples we've later written. Just go here, just follow this recipe right here. Save somebody the time to poke around and figure it out. You have a question, Scott? Yeah. Um, so one of the problems that I've been having, because uh, I've mostly done Rails development when it comes to bigger projects, and, and Rails is very clear about how you're supposed to lay things out, right? Like yeah. the convention for how the app should be laid out. And in diving into React, I found that one of the things that I struggle most with is that there's no, I haven't been able to find a strong convention for how you should lay things out. And so when I dive into this example app, for example, and I start going in there and play around with the React, there's like stores and there's actions and there's, there's like all these different things. And so I'm kind of curious if you have any suggested uh, places or resources to go to to just kind of read about more of a hierarchical, like how do you lay this out and why is it laid out in such a way? Well, there's there's so many different layers to this onion. Okay. So, first of all, in the, not only are there layers to the onion, the fashionable thing today may not be the fashionable thing tomorrow. So I'm going to tell you, like, latest off the press sort of thing right now is that um, there's two things. Um, one of them is the same as um, stories that one of my engineers is put together. And he's got this idea for how to, how to you know, lay out the stuff, which is going to be different than the way that we actually have in the current examples. We just, this came out last week, and this is related to, um, I don't know if you put it in here. There's even like, so there's debate among my own, I let my engineers spend a lot of time actually debating stuff with each other because I just think they have a lot of fun doing that, so I don't want to, I don't want to ruin the fun. Um, but there's something called redux docs that, um, is another thing that we're actually looking into, starting to follow this. This is literally, you know, very, very, um, you know, quite, quite new. 
So we're, we're looking at into this, and we might actually change some of the examples around in terms of how we actually structure the code in terms of which folders we put the stuff in. By the way, so the, all this discussion about like the React and setup of that and how you use React, it really is completely way like separate than React on Rails. The, the one thing I'll say though is if you're using all this open source stuff, we're like, you know, the way to do it, not the regular React Rails, because then you're dealing with the asset pipeline. So anyway, I was telling you the uh, the AKIP guy said to me that they're they're calling me in. You know, I said, well, do you want me to like do any video or like how to use React Rails for like the really simple case? He goes, why would you teach the wrong case? So I was like, what he said. You know, that thing's outdated. So anyway, um, what I did was, you know, so over here, you know, one of the things I could kind of just you know briefly describe to you all is just kind of what happened after we ran the generator. What what exactly? How does a directory structure work in terms of what React on Rails does? Is that of interest to people that kind of, it's, it's actually, it's really not that complicated. You guys want to see that? Sure. Graphics? Okay, so I'm going to kind of go through the stuff, just, so I'm just going to hit a few of the highlights. So one of the things is, is um, we create a directory called Webpack. It really could be configured however you like it. And we put generated, fun, um, fun, um, generated files in there. We also um, modify the application JS file there. And you see this React require Webpack bundle. So this is requiring the stuff. Um, this basically just puts whatever Webpack generated in your app. We don't do any style sheet stuff. Tell you a little bit about the history of the, um, the generator. We originally did very ambitiously a lot of the stuff. The problem is, is that the stuff kept changing so fast. It's like, okay, we can't maintain this. And it was really hard to get new people on for it. Nowadays, it, it's super simple and super clean to get up and running with literally the Hello World app, which is not necessarily how you would structure your React to be a production app, but it's great for getting a newbie set up. So outside of that directory, a few things in your assets directory, everything happens in your client directory. This is a directory that won't exist before. The app directory here, that contains your JavaScript code. Node modules is something that NPM does. And notice that this is, um, if any of you use um, RubyMine, you want to make sure that you uh, mark directory as excluded because if RubyMine starts indexing your NPM JS script or node modules directory, you are going to be in a little pain. There's tons of stuff like tons. tons. Yeah, it will be indexing forever. Um, then Babel is a default for Babel. Babel is the stuff that converts to ES6. Um, all this stuff, a lot of it you can find templates off of. You don't have to understand every single thing. Your package JSON file, this contains two main things. One is some critical scripts that are necessary for React on Rails to run. And the main thing is, is how do you build your files for test production and development? And these are the commands right here that, that do it. But just run Webpack. And then, so you're saying run Webpack. Everything about running Webpack will be in your Webpack config. Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, by the way, interrupt me anytime. What do you use for testing in Webpack? Well, okay, again, there's different layers to the onion of testing. Um, so, to be honest with you, um, you know, so we use like Mocha, something like that, I think, for our JavaScript test. I don't think we don't do we don't do a very good job with our JavaScript testing. We do some of it we do, some of it we don't. We don't we do very little view testing. But what we do a lot of is capybara testing. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, what is that? Capybara is integration test. Okay. It's making sure that what we want the users to see is actually happening. It is painful at times, making sure it all works. It is fragile at times. But it is by far better than hiring a team of people to manually test your app for every release. So, yeah. So, um, touching on that topic, you mentioned, yeah. uh, I understand that Rails has a set of tools for testing in particular, but uh, JavaScript also has its own kind of set of tools. Yeah. In a situation where you have uh, a JavaScript app in your client directory, would you still use your Rails um, test folder or? 
uh, spec folder for our spec, whatever, to test in JavaScript, or would you do it all inside your client directory? Absolutely, you would do it all inside your client directory. If you look at the more advanced example we have, it's all inside the client directory. Basically, here's like another thing about the way we structure React on Rails, is that you can have some JavaScript rep, um, developers that don't do any Rails work. They can open up the client directory with WebStorm, a JavaScript editor, or Atom, whatever, and they're just not dealing with anything to do with Rails. They're just in their directory, and they're happy. So that's, um, so here's so the Webpack config here. There's a couple, um, by the way, how, how much more time? I've, I've kind of let's like let's wrap it up in about, um, yeah. I don't want to cut you off, so no, no. maybe touch on like four minutes? Yeah, well, yeah let's just kind of, like, let's just, by, by the way, so, I mean, there's, there's just a ton of stuff. But, you know, the main point is this. You got to get everything goes in the client directory. There's a Ruby config file where you set up a few things. What's in the Ruby config <coughs> file, which is React on Rails RB right here. You have to tell your config file that your file is going to be, you know, the server bundle file, for example, for server rank. You just have to type, you know, connect up a few things. That's going to have to um, connect with your webpack file, for example. So there's a few little things that have to be connected. But, you know, Ruby config file will have to be um, coordinated with your webpack file. Everything's in your webpack directory. It really pretty much just works. I got a couple of um, Let's finish the little slides here in one or two. I'm going to tell you, but um, let's see. Oh, this is helpful. <laughs> oh, I mean, um, sorry. No, that's for break projector. Sorry. Okay. Um, so getting started, um, I'll give, I'm going to I'll post where all these slides are. Here's a couple quick links. There's a ton of stuff out there. Um, yeah, definitely, um, this thing here, go to the uh, uh, reactrails.com, that was the site I showed you, and there's links to pretty much everything there. By the way, we're actually, the um, project we're probably just about to start is that we're going to put a React Native app inside that repo, and it'll be leveraging the same server and some of the same JavaScript code. Kind of cool. Um, here's friendsandguests.com, it's a screenshot, screen grab of it. Kind of looks like um, kind of looks like Airbnb, except it's got a whole bunch of stuff that's different. <laughs> um, we've got here. This is one of my clients. This is a client I've been with since 2011. We've done my company's done everything in their software except for we work with their CTO. So that's um, I'm really proud of this app. They are um, basically going there and get your photos taken and come out of there and they're on your phone. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes through that. We have Jacob here from Spylight. Um, incredibly pleased, Jacob. Um, I remember us do our first major React Native app. He found us through React on Rails. And um, Jacob, why did you um, why did you hire us? Uh, mainly was just looking to find something through the open source community. Of uh, had a very short timeline for finding people, and it seemed like the best way to quickly vet what someone had built or what a group had built. So. Uh, they seem like they're super stoked. Jacob actually showed up tonight. He wouldn't show it up. I think if he wasn't stoked. So, <laughs> so I'm really stoked. I actually showed a couple of you the um, the app running on my phone. They're like, whoa, this is pretty good. So I'm pretty pretty stoked on that. Um, you know, if anybody wants more help, there's I'm super easy to get in touch with. I'm like the most least private person in the world. Justin at shoppingcode.com, and um, yeah. So anyway, that's um. Uh, that's it. Thanks for listening.